Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today, we're going to be working on this E92 328i on the lift behind me. So we're going to take you through the steps on how to replace a steering knuckle uh, on any E90, E91, E92, E93, 3 Series rear wheel drive car. All these cars predominantly have aluminum front suspension, so they are very susceptible to damage. In this car's particular case, it is because of curb strike damage. We're going to be taking care of this, but there's plenty of other reasons why this part might need a replacement. Uh, so regardless of the situation, it's going to be the same process. We're going to take you through those steps, but before we get into it, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need first. So some of the tools you're going to need in order to replace a steering knuckle or front wheel carrier on any of these E90, E91, E92, E93, 3 Series cars, 21 millimeter sockets, 18 millimeter sockets and wrenches, a whole different variety. You want a T40 for the counter hold for the control arms, a T30 for the mounting screw for the wheel speed sensor. Along with that, a series of ratchets. One of these uh, caliper hooks is going to be especially useful for when you remove the brake caliper. Uh, dead below hammer, flathead screwdriver, uh, aka the most abused tool uh, in the tool collection. Uh, torque wrench that can do at least 175 newton meters of torque. And if you have access to like a quarter inch impact gun and a half inch impact gun, that'll certainly make uh, aspects of this a little bit easier. Another specialty tool that you might need is a uh, ball joint separator, a scissor style ball joint separator. Sometimes these uh, ball joints can get stuck in the knuckle. And if you're in that situation, you might need that tool. But other than that, it's all pretty standard metric style stuff. Uh, nothing too, too crazy or out of the ordinary. Uh, and also, I forgot, one of these uh, spindle uh, separators or spreaders is going to be super helpful for getting the knuckle off of the strut. So don't forget that one too, like I almost did. But other than that, these are all the tools you're going to need to do the job. So with that said, let's go and get into it and see what we got to do to get this done. All right, so in order to replace a knuckle, we need to have an understanding of what's attached to it. In this case, almost everything. Brake caliper, the strut comes through the uh, pass through here. We have our wheel speed sensor, our four wheel bearing bolts, also the dust shield, the control arms, and the tie rod. Basically everything attaches to this point. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the brake caliper. It's held on with two 18 millimeter drive bolts. I'm cheating with a swivel socket and a stubby impact gun. You can still do this in hand tools. Get the brake caliper out of here and make sure that using this little hook, you carry one from CTA. I'm actually gonna hook it to the strut. Uh, that way we're not putting any undue pressure or tension on the brake hose. Next up, I'm gonna come in here with a T30 socket and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, uh, the screw for the wheel speed sensor. Uh, generally, these do come out somewhat easily. I hope that's the case on this one. So I'd like to avoid replacing a wheel speed sensor if we can avoid it. And that just came right out, which is great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that off to the side for now. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and we have our little um, wheel speed sensor bracket here. I'm just gonna pull the sensor off because it is attached uh, to this little bracket, which is attached to the strut via the pinch bolt. And I wanna make sure that when I take this apart, I don't stretch any of this out. So it's easy just to slide it out. Just take a flathead screwdriver, come in from behind, pop it out. And that'll also allow us to move the wheel speed sensor further out of the way. It was rookie hour here this morning and I should have undone the set screw first, but we can still make this work. It's a seven millimeter Allen. Hopefully it'll come out easily, it does. See what holds on the rotor for that. But usually you should try to do that first. And also we're lucky that the rotor is basically falling off the hub here. Looks like, yeah, it was cleaned and lubricated at some point. So that's nice, that came right off. Sometimes that doesn't happen for you. So you might have to tap it off with a hammer or use a brake rotor puller to get the rotor off the hub. Now's a good time to check the condition of the wheel bearing. It's pretty loud. We'll have a DIY on how to replace this, but that's not the focus now. I'm gonna go ahead and get our uh, brake rotor back and put it out of the way. It's held on with four 10 millimeter screws. 
Fortunately on the front here, this backing plate can be removed independently of the wheel bearing, which is nice. Uh, one thing to note, I'm leaving the bearing attached to the knuckle. The bearing can be removed from the knuckle after the knuckle's removed from the car. So you don't need to do this at all. Uh, you're saving yourself a step and it's much easier to uninstall and reinstall this uh, off the car because the strut passes through and it blocks the two upper bolts. So if you're replacing the spindle or knuckle, whatever you like to call it, it's just easier to leave the bolt on bearing in place. If you were replacing the bearing, you would have to undo that pinch bolt. You'd have to spread it, drop this whole thing down. We're not doing that for this video. Like I said, we'll have a video on how to replace this wheel bearing separately, and we'll show those steps specifically if you were just replacing the wheel bearing. Uh, we need to release the uh, tie rod end and the two control arms from the knuckle. It's held in with the same nut. It's all 21 millimeters. These are pretty tight, so uh, leverage is gonna be your friend on this. If you have a really long wrench or a breaker bar, uh, you're also having to move the wheel to get better access to several of these, so uh, just try to work with the car as much as possible. Okay, there we go. There is a uh, T30 counter hold on the end of these, so if the stud starts to spin, you can counter hold uh, by the stud. So we have a 21 millimeter and a T40 counter hold. Uh, this thing has started to spin in the stud, so I just want to make sure that the nut is coming off. Usually you'll have corrosion on the stud of the ball joint and uh, doing it this way is uh, ensures that you're not gonna run into a problem with this coming out. Also, this is a good sign because that means that the um, ball joint is loose in the taper, which means we're not gonna have to use any kind of crazy force like a, a ball joint removal tool to remove this from the knuckle. And you can already see that is actually already loose which is great. Leverage, baby. Okay. Uh, our outer tie rod end, um, we're gonna have to use a ball joint separator on. The nut is coming off with the stud staying perfectly still, so. So, yep. Uh, you can see there's really not a, a whole bunch of taper on this outer tie rod end, so that's probably part of the reason why it uh, fell out the way that it did. But again, not gonna argue with that because that just makes everything a little bit easier. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and loosen this uh, inner bushing bolt here. That's so that uh, we can pull this control arm down and out of the knuckle. Uh, there's quite a bit of spring tension from that bushing. So by loosening the bolt, we'll, it'll be able to just drop down and out of the way. There we go. Uh, like I said, if you, leave the, if you leave that bolt tight, you're gonna be fighting the bushing the entire time. And then uh, for us here, our thrust arm, uh, yeah, it kind of is in the way, but it's not really a huge deal for us at the moment. That can stay there. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and take 18 millimeter uh, sockets and a wrench and uh, loosen up this pinch bolt here. We're gonna remove it, spread the spindle, pull it down off the strut. To kind of help stabilize everything here, I'm just gonna go ahead and thread this nut back on a couple turns, just so we have something that's kind of anchoring everything. Taking an 18 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket, and we're gonna move this pinch bolt. Uh, this pinch bolt basically compresses the spindle or knuckle onto the strut since the strut passes through. This is a little bracket uh, for the wheel speed sensor. They are different left and right. If you happen to be doing both, just keep in mind where this goes and the orientation in which it went on. So just remember it was on like that and we go to put the new one on. Next up, we're gonna take um, this special spreader socket. This is specifically designed to safely spread the casting of this knuckle. Um, I know a lot of people take chisels and hammers and just do this, but uh, this is the correct tool for this job. And so that will just gently spread our spindle so we can drop it down and out. We'll remove this nut again. And we should. Probably gonna have to give it a couple of love taps. Uh, but we should be able to walk this down and off the strut. What will commonly happen is we get a lot of aluminum uh, corrosion oxidation that happens in this knuckle, which really, really pinches the knuckle to the strut. Uh, because this is cast aluminum, this piece is junk. Um, but if you did have to tap this down and off, use a dead blow hammer. So we're gonna be swapping over this wheel bearing. 
And like I said, it's easier to do this with the knuckle completely off the car because normally uh, these two top bolts are completely blocked by the strut coming through. If you replace the wheel bearing on a car, which like I said, we're gonna have a separate video for that, you would actually need to undo the pinch and uh, lower the knuckle down on the strut. Uh, so it's held in with four 18 millimeter bolts and actually you can see right here, this is where the wheel speed sensor normally sits and you can actually see the uh, wheel bearing right there. Uh, fun fact on these wheel bearings because the magnetic ring is in here, sometimes you can have debris that builds up in this area and can actually affect the reading of the wheel speed. So you might think you have a bad wheel speed sensor or maybe a bad wheel bearing and it's actually just because you'll get stuff that gets trapped in the back side of here. So just a fun fact. Four 18 millimeter bolts can impact them out. If you're reinstalling the original bearing or installing a new bearing, you can only install it one way. They have made this pretty much dummy proof, mostly. Um, but uh, you're gonna be really tempted to have this tab face downward at this opening in the knuckle. It's not how it goes. In fact, if you look at the spacing of these holes, they're totally different, and those correspond to the holes on the bearing uh, because it can only go on one way. The uh, little tang there, that tab, is gonna face towards the rear. Always. And you know, if you wanna do a double check, everything should line up around the perimeter. So at this point, like I said, it's very important to use new hardware for this. Uh, these bolts have pre-applied Loctite on them. Uh, so you do wanna use new bolts when you're installing them into the knuckle. Torque spec on the wheel bearing bolts is 110 newton meters. So we're gonna go ahead and slide our new knuckle up into position. You'll notice right here, you have a little alignment dab. It also sets the height of the strut on the knuckle. You also notice that there's a little machined notch here. This little tiny point, that needs to line up with that. Before we fight with this too much, I'm just gonna slide that thrust arm back on and put a nut on, just so that it can kind of hold its own weight. And we're just gonna go ahead and just give this a couple of taps. So I went ahead and just used a uh, dead blow hammer. Gets this nut to tap it up. Um, even with that spreader in there, still just fighting it just a little bit uh, due to the old corrosion there on the strike. Could've cleaned that up to begin with. That could help potentially, but it's always gonna be a slight struggle going back up like that. All right, so I went ahead and just threaded the nuts back onto the tie rod and the control arms. Haven't tied anything down yet, that just kind of holds everything in place. Making sure that the knuckle is lined up with that tab, uh, which it is, the alignment mark lines up. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our pinch, or our spreader tool. So before we put our pinch bolt in, we're gonna go ahead and slide our wheel speed sensor bracket back on, just kinda goes into place. We're gonna take our bolt and our nut. We're gonna go ahead and tighten those down and then once we have it tightened down, we'll target a spec, but uh, that will basically hold the knuckle in position on the strut. And I, don't, I do wanna say this, you don't need to replace the bolt uh, or the pinch bolt, but you should replace the nut, which is a self-locking nut. Any self-locking nut should be replaced after each use. 81 newton meters is the torque spec on the pinch bolt. I do recommend uh, going by that. It is easy to over torque this bolt significantly, and you can damage the knuckle doing it that way. So definitely follow the torque spec for that, 81 newton meters. So all of these uh, nuts again on the control arms are 21 millimeter with a T40 counter hold. I'm gonna make sure that uh, we draw the ball joint back down here for the thrust arm doing this first since it points downward. Um, there are some tangs on the ball joint seat. I don't wanna spin uh, the ball joint in location. I wanna just draw it down and I can tighten the nut down from there. <laughs> 
The option of counter holding is to force the knuckle into the taper of the ball joint, but it's not really going to work on this particular one, unfortunately. Mostly because the other ball joints are loose. So right now I'm just spinning the nut. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down by hand, but we'll torque it to spec uh, once the others are bottomed out and seated. So right about there, I felt this sort of bottom up. So switch over to the wrench, tighten those down. 21 mil, 175 newton meters of torque. Need to get this uh, little grommet back into uh, that notch there. It's pretty tight. Little trick from Corey Calvin. Use a little bit of brake parts cleaner as temporary lubricant. It's a cool little trick I've seen him do. Super useful. See how easy that dropped in? Not only dropped in, but uh, brake parts cleaner dries quickly and uh, you don't have to worry about that being schmooed up with like silicone or grease or anything like that. So lastly, we're just gonna go ahead and drop the wheel speed sensor into the hole like so. Take our T30 set screw. It's a six millimeter thread. Uh, yeah, if you wanna go ahead and torque that to 10 newton meters, go right ahead. I'm not gonna do that. It's kind of not necessary. Just gonna go ahead and tighten that down and it'll be perfectly fine. There we go, installed. So you need to go ahead and uh, tighten our bolt here for the wishbone back. So there's actually two different torque specs for this. If it's a class 8.8 .8 bolt, it's gonna be 68 newton meters plus 90. If it's a 10.9 class bolt, it's 100 newton meters plus 90. Now, <clears throat> should replace these bolts. Because it is a uh, torque to yield, however, uh, with the 90 degree torque angle on that, you can get away with reusing them. In our case, we're gonna be replacing the control arms on this car anyway, so just so you know that there could be two different bolts, two different classes of bolt on there, just be aware of that torque spec difference. Let's so go ahead and do our first torque, which is 68 Newton meters. And then we'll go ahead and uh, torque angle it to 90 from there. I'm gonna reinstall our brake backing plate. It's held on with four uh, 10 millimeter drive screws. Uh, they are an M6 thread, so if you wanna go ahead and torque them, you can do 10 newton meters. However, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hit them with the quarter inch impact driver. These smaller fasteners that are not terribly important, you can get away without having to torque. Reinstall our brake rotor. 7 millimeter set screw, 7 millimeter Allen. And then lastly, we'll take our brake rotor, or brake caliper, sorry, not rotor. We'll slide the caliper back on the rotor. Torque spec on these caliper carrier bolts, 110 newton meters. So as you can see, it's relatively straightforward to replace a steering knuckle on any of these E90, E91, E92, E93 rear wheel drive three series. Uh, there's really not that many special tools required. In our case, we're very fortunate that the tie rod ball joint and control arm ball joints came straight out of the knuckle. There isn't a huge taper on those, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but if you do run into it, you'll probably want to use a scissor style ball joint tool to make sure that you don't damage the boot on those ball joints because then you will have to replace those control arms. Uh, but pretty straightforward process. Really not too complicated, definitely something you can do home uh, over the weekend. Uh, it's all basic hand tools, so yeah, all in all, not too bad, even though it looks daunting. Very simple to gain access to. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit that like button, and also hit subscribe. We have a lot more videos on the way, and as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.